All right, so what we're working on today is we have a uh, fence on the side of the house over here. And I want to be able to back. Don't mind my mess. This is where I store all my crap. I want to be able to back a uh, vehicle or a trailer in here. So we're going to make a, about a 10 foot wide gate here. We're going to sink a 4x4 four four steel square tube post there. And then one over here as well so that'll open this area here up to back a trailer in on the side of the house or a couple of vehicles just to keep them off the street when i'm working on them and uh i also like to get a, a trailer and instead of paying for storage i can park it on the side of the house back here so we've got all the stuff moved away from the fence and uh we're gonna start digging the hole here we've cleared the rock out and then we're going to Pretty much try and shift the fence off because the seal posts are going to be uh, flush with this right here and then these will mount straight to the metal gate frame as opposed to wood we got some self-tapping screws that are intended to go from uh, through wood and then into metal so we'll have a 10 foot wide gate right here and then we'll do a sturdy uh, latch on the top and a latch on the bottom so it won't make any noise in the wind and it won't be going anywhere let's go ahead and get started and uh we're gonna have to pull this tarp off and lay it on the ground to to put the dirt on probably set it back here keep it out of the way and that way we don't have to worry about getting dirt in the rocks on top of the weed barrier so let's go ahead and get started on digging these holes out and then uh, we'll see about popping this fence off and then just kind of shifting it out the idea is to do this with the fence down for as few hours as possible. So the plan is to just pop it off and shift it out a couple inches to do our work and mount up our, our posts and then hang the gate. And then when the time comes, we'll just pull these pickets off, drop that fence out and uh, hang the, the pickets on the new gate. So we should only be without a fence for hopefully less than uh, an hour or so. But let's get started and uh, dig in these holes first.
brackets for the hinges drawn out. For the hinge, we're using these barrel-style hinges that you'll see on a lot of trailer ramps or gates. And then uh, we're going to have these brackets that go to the 4x4 and then to the 3x1, which will be the gate material. And this will be the post. So let's go ahead and cut it out. Uh, we'll start getting it tacked up, and then you'll get a better idea of what we're looking at. So what we're looking at here is that will be welded to this and welded to the 4x4. And then this will be welded to the gate itself. And it will sit like this. Ah. sit like this and then the gate will swing out like this off of the 4x4 but you get a better idea once we actually get this welded on to the, the post and then we start making the gate as well All right, so this is the post in the ground. This would be facing the front of the house. The fence panels will hang off of this side. This is the farthermost uh, part of the gate where the hinges will mount to. And now we get to see how the alignment went. Pretty good. So now the gate will be built off of this portion here, extend out 10 feet. We'll have this, uh, this uh, will have a top rail, a middle rail, and a lower rail. Uh, and it'll be the wide flat part sticking out. 
like so. I can't do it because the garage door's in here. Let's try over here. But essentially like that. And then we'll be able to do some some bracing in here to help with the rigidity of the uh, the gate. But so far it's looking pretty good. I would say we're pretty much ready to weld out these hinges. Uh, and then we'll pull this off. Because the way these work is that you can just pop them up and then now it's a removable gate if you had to. But the whole thing will be heavy enough. I'm not worried about it lifting off on its own with the wind or anything. The only downside of doing something like this with these offset hinges is that your 10 foot gate, and 10 feet is going to be plenty, uh, but your 10 foot gate just turned into a uh, 9 foot and, or you know, a 10 foot minus 4 inches, so a 9 foot 8 inch gate. But that should be plenty. Uh, no trailer I have should be that wide. So let's go ahead and weld out these hinges and uh, then we can see about uh, putting this gate together. We're going to leave it on here and weld it out in place just to help with the, the warping. Then another thing we'll have to watch out for is if we were to weld this and this, those welds would then hit and the gate wouldn't close properly. So we're not going to be able to weld here or here. We can weld over here for that one inch where we can weld over here for this one inch where it doesn't meet up, but um, we can't we can't weld in here or there. It's a tight fit, so but there'll be plenty of weld everywhere else and on the other side. So this is going to be one of the cross beams for the gate and we have it measured out to 119 because we want the width of our gate to be 121 inches. It's like 10 feet and one inch and that has to do with the fact that the uh, pickets are I believe five and a half inches wide. So we just wanted to have an even number of pickets so we don't have to split a picket in half. Alright, so we've got our top rung in place, got it leveled out on both sides to try and get the, 
the best first couple tacks that we can. Now we just have to uh, square out this corner. That's good. And then make sure that we're square here, which we are not. That right there is square. So let's throw a couple tacks in here. Pretty good. down to the other side and do the same thing. Square it up and weld it and tack it in place. So this is just a rough squaring up. Once we get uh, the bottom one on, which we're gonna do next, we'll be able to uh, measure corner to corner. And then that's one, we'll put a ratchet strap on there if we have to, on whichever direction, corner to corner. So I'll pull it one way or the other to square it up. And then once we get that square is when we're gonna burn it in real nice and hot. And then we'll end up putting from that top corner up there down to this corner, uh, a piece that goes the whole way. And that'll just help support the load and keep it square after we mount everything up. So let's get this uh, bottom one installed. And then, like I said, we can square it up properly. Perfectly square, 130 and a half outside corner to outside corner, and then, uh, or I'm sorry, outside corner to inside corner. Let's double check that again. All right, perfectly square, 11 feet outside corner to outside corner on both diagonals. So uh, we're ready to, to start welding on this seam here since we're good and square. And uh, we're going to take our time to avoid warpage, so we'll probably weld uh, you know, this side, and then that side, and then flip it over. And somewhere in there we're going to throw the, uh, the middle piece in as well. Alright, so this isn't the kind of case where you want to force this into there. 
we push it in there, but we're gonna check the measurement and make sure we're still 11 feet outside corner to outside corner before we start welding on this. All right, it still looks like we're good and square. So uh, now we're just gonna go ahead and tack, tack this in here and then same on the other side. And then we'll pull this in tight. All right, so now we're ready to start tacking these in here, the other side, and then up at the, uh, the top corner over there. And then that's definitely gonna help make this thing a lot more rigid. All right, we got it all leveled in. This is the easiest way that I found to level a big post like this is a couple of uh, two by fours and some clamps. That way, uh, as you're leveling it, you can just release the tension on these speed clamps, uh, make your slide adjustments, and then just clamp it back down. Uh, you got this buried under some shingles that the last roofers left behind, but really, if you need to, you could drive some little stakes in the ground and run a screw. And then, uh, that would really only be necessary if we were kind of heavier on the other side, which we put the brace on this side, we're heavy on this side, so it wants to lean that way. So we don't really need to anchor that except for just so it, it can't push out, which is what we, did, what we did with those shingles. And then on this side, we come down with it, and it's just kind of laid in the rocks. It hasn't been a problem, so. But right now that is perfectly leveled. And unfortunately, the, uh, the fence next door isn't exactly perfectly level, but we're gonna go with what we've got so we're uh we're level with the world so we're gonna go mix up some more concrete and continue filling up this hole
that where you want them? Yep. All right, so here we are. Got all the boards put on the front. Got to do a little spray painting back here on that exposed metal. The front face of it was painted, but then I ran out of spray paint, so it didn't get done. Uh, we got it nice and anchored in here. And then that ties down to the bottom of that 4x4 post over there. And then uh, I'll put, uh, I got to weld a T bar on these but then i could just undo those by hand probably cut them off so they're shorter or find some shorter ones there but overall hit that with a wire wheel turned out really good we uh just welded these brackets in here to catch those two buys catch those two buys there the concrete isn't quite here and i gotta clean up all my welding rods and dig out that 4x4. Four four. So we're not even close to being done, but it looks done. And out here you can see, problem is this is the nicest, straightest part of the fence. So, you just barely see the hinges sticking out here. There's the edge of the gate. And then we're just gonna put the rock back in underneath. And that's it. I think it turned out awesome.